Greetings, fellow humans. Matt Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new Leo Bog in the High series. You guys may all be familiar with the High 75, High 8. Uh, high 75 just appeared out of nowhere and has really been a popular board. And I've seen it. I mean, I think I, the lowest I've seen it, it was about $46, $48. It is an aluminum. 75% with a knob. Now it does have a funky knob and it's wired. The high eight is the wireless version of it, but that particular model seems to be really hard to get a hold of. Even Leo Bog is having stock issues. Um, just my guess. Don't take me at it. I think they're coming up with a updated version of both. In the high 75, they just have more units of. In the high eight, they're only they're only waiting to make perhaps a new revision of it. That's just my guess, but that's neither here nor there. Today, we're taking a look at the high 98. By the 98, you might be able to tell that it is in 98% or an 1800. Um, it really depends on how it is set up past this point, but it is an aluminum keyboard in that same family. Now, I don't know if this one is because it ends with an 8, if it's wired or if it's three mode well we don't really get much information outside of the box leo bog doesn't stick to any particular style all right so without further ado let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we've got so before we take a look at the keeper i always like to take a look at what accessories are included they always have a nice accessories box sometimes it's just thrown in there but I know I can always expect a little bit better from Leo Bog. We've got your standard wire switch and keycap puller. We've got a gray rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable with zip lock tie. So that's the accessories box. And here we are with the Leo Bog High 98. And I want to thank Leo Bog for including a dust cover. I will continue to say this because if you use your dust cover on your keyboard when your keyboard's not in use, it's going to last you as long as it possibly can. This one does have a nice contour to it. It's actually made out of a little bit thicker plastic than they're usually made out of. It's not that flimsy. And it fits so perfectly over the keyboard. Especially since we're dealing with an 1800 layout. No, this is actually a 90% because the arrows aren't expanded. I keep getting this one thing confused. So let's just say this is an eight, a 98 because we do have the full size zero over here, which I know a lot of people prefer. I, I do myself because I'm that's what I'm used to. So we had a couple of goodies hiding underneath the dust cover for us. We have a uh, standard layout of all your keys. We have our happy little astronaut guy. I like their little astronaut guy. It's waiting high. All right, so QWNE, that W stand for Windows, I guess, caps lock and num lock. And then QWE to change. Q is for Android, W for Windows, and E for Mac. All right. I like that some of these wireless keyboards are just, I mean, even wired. You hook it up to your tablet or your phone. I like that they're actually having an Android mode. Um, it's just some minor little things. It just makes it a little bit easier. Also, hiding underneath the dust cover, we find that we have a user manual. And here we find that we have two different languages. And we actually have a user warranty card. It's very good. Um, so that we can have our one-year warranty on the product. And it gives us the standard definite. Uh, and we also have the standard functionality as well as the shortcuts. We may need to come back to this. So looking at the keyboard, we have a very popular, as of right now, I could probably find a dozen keyboards um, in this near vicinity that have this very similar colorway. Um, though the font on this one is a little bit different, I've got to say. I always look at the M and the shape of the top of the M. This one's a sharper. It's actually, it looks like a little bit heavier or a little bit bolder of a font. Um, and I like that they're bigger. I'm not one for tiny little fonts because like got all this space and you're hiding up in the corner it's like why are you scared font i'm not gonna strike you that hard 
but I like these legends. They're nice, crisp, clear. I do love the colors, the contrast with the light sky blue, baby blue with that. Um, it's more of a deeper lilac, I guess you could say. Um, this is a magnet badge, or at least it should be, yep. But it is also a magnet machine. So as soon as you touch it, boom, <laughs> fingerprints. So now we have a lovely um, classic wedge design that is just, I'll never get tired of it. The very clean cut on the side. We have a very even weight to it. It's, I mean, it's solid and it's heavy compared to a plastic keyboard, but it's not, it's not as, it's not something that I feel that, you know, if I have to move it from here to my car, I'll feel like I just went to the gym. Now, granted, that's just me. On the bottom, we have Leo Bod. We have the astronaut waving. wonder if he has a name. And we have our feet. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these keycaps and what we have underneath. First, we'll measure the thickness of these keycaps. All right. Looks like we're at 1.5 millimeters of thickness, which is a very nice thickness. Um, I will guess, but I will confirm that they are PVT. They're a double shot. They, they definitely feel like PVT. As of late, I've been able to actually tell the difference a lot easier, but the majority of my sets are PVT, so an ABS is immediately either by sound or by feel to tell the difference with them. So it looks like we have... Ah, this is a Leo Bog switch I am unfamiliar with. We have a creamy kind of bottom, a very light baby blue top with a little bit of a darker blue box stem. And we have the light diffuser, the linear switch. It's a very light linear switch. I would guess 38 to 42 grams probably. And it does seem to have, I would guess, 3.8 millimeters of travel. I'll look up what switch that is for the specs. So below the key cap, we do have an FR4 plate. FR4 is basically the same material that most PCBs are made out of. All right, with the stabilizers, we have a little bit of wobble. There's not quite as tight as I would prefer them to be but they do look like they're well lubricated. We're gonna unlock them and go ahead and pull them out. We do not seem to have any lubrication on the elbows, but we do have a good amount of lubrication, not overly lubricated inside of the stem housing and on the wire. Now checking below the plate, it does not appear that there are any screw-in stabilizer support. So when I come back to this, well, today we're sticking with it stock. When I come back to it, I'll definitely tighten these up. To see how much of a difference that makes. I've noticed as of late that screw and stabilizers aren't as much of a headache as they used to be, especially with the older tray mounted steel plate keyboards. They're much better than they were back then. So, and once they're locked, they're actually in place pretty good. That tiny amount of wobble isn't really going to be affected. The sound, I don't think. That's just my guess. Now, we do have high file layers, which is the PET plastic sheet above the PCB and the IXPE foam sheet above the PET sheet. Down below, also feels like we have... It looks like um, it could be one of those combination. I've seen it as poron on one side or neoprene on one side with PET sheet on the other side. And that really helps to provide that hi-fi sound, that sound that is very popular in a lot of keyboards. Um, and a lot of people like. I know some people are like, oh, foams, they just make a keyboard. If it's enjoyable, then foams work for some people. I mean, 
they're not for everybody, but not everything is for everybody. So I, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I like them both ways. It really depends on the keyboard. I, I've heard some keyboards that without foam, I'm like, eh, no, I've also got a couple keyboards without any foam and they sound great. Um, I like how they sound to me. This is a very personal preference. And I mean, I just, I don't understand how some people would be like, that doesn't sound right. Like, well, unless it's like fingernails on a chalkboard, uh, uh, I really, I mean, there's, there's sounds I prefer, but I can't say there's a keyboard that makes a sound that I hate. Even the one that with the solenoid, it's fun, but I'm a kid at heart, so that's just me. Now, we do have a north-facing 3 and 5 pin PCB. So if uh, you're interested in doing the shine through keycaps on the top, uh, you could do it with these. They, you, they will light up most of the legend, if not all of it. Um, obviously, if we're dealing with south facing, then you want to remember that if you want shine through, you're going to have to get the front or the side shine through keycaps. Nice tolerances. FR4 plates are really good uh, for tolerances, and they're a good, um, almost like a middle ground between what I would say like a polycarbonate plate and aluminum plate as far as stiffness movement and even sound to a certain degree but that's just again my opinion now, i don't want to sound like the angry old man yelling at the skies but even just a year ago there was it was hardly a keyboard that sounded like this straight out of the box for a keyboard to sound like this or even close to this it was taking it apart it was applying the force brake mod it was finding different filler um Finding the right combination of phones, um, maybe looping the switches, uh, maybe changing the keycaps. There was just so many things that had to be done. Now, don't get me wrong. That's part of the hobby and part of what got me into it um, deep. I fell deep down the rabbit hole. Uh, like my wife likes to say, she's like, oh, well, you have an apartment down there, don't you? you go to it every day. <laughs> so um, at least she's supportive. So I, I, I really appreciate that. But the keyboards that have been coming out this year, 2024, I almost, I, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but I do want to say 2024 is like the year of the mechanical keyboard. Yes, they've been around forever. I know there's been all sorts of different types. Yes, Cherry's patent on their switch expired around 2014. There was a big explosion then. I really think that during the pandemic, that's when this hobby really kind of went to the next level. I mean, it exponentially grew and become became way more popular but it kind of took a little while for the industry to catch up as far as instant products went i mean don't get me wrong there were some amazing beautiful boards or group buys but i mean don't get me wrong i love this hobby i'm not going to spend several hundred dollars on a keyboard and wait three years for it i just don't think that's how it should be done but thankfully we now have a market filled with some amazing keyboards in stock we don't have to wait for shipping and shipping many times can be done quick and if you're really in a hurry you can usually get especially if they're stock you know on amazon your local country you can get it overnight heck sometimes even the same day the choices are amazing so i have no complaints and i still continue to see innovation every single day so we have a nice looking keyboard and i'm pretty sure this is a 98 percent but if you look at it basically it's a full size keyboard it's just using the best use of its space. Well, 98% of its space because it is taking up one key with a badge, but I can guarantee you that key that's missing, most people are not gonna miss. I mean, how often do you use pause break every day? When was the last time you used pause break? <laughs> pause break is my extra key if I'm using anything that has it. Um, it's one that I can, you know, mess around with or use as my, basically my muter, my mute button in case I don't have a um, knob on that keyboard or I'm not using my numpad with a knob because I'm so used to having a knob now. I think knob is just, has to be a part of the keyboard now. But that's, again, just my opinion. We have a lovely keyboard for anyone who's coming from a full size. They're not gonna have any issue using this keyboard and i think a lot of people would actually be able to use this keyboard without even needing to even dig into the software and 
do any programming. Now, Leo Bog, uh, from what I recall, does allow you to re rebind keys and rebind function layer. Uh, though we'll take a look at the software here in a minute. Um, I just think that on the high series with the knob, that you couldn't program the knob. That was one of the things. I don't know if it's been updated or not. I haven't checked in a while. Uh, so it was only volume up and down at mute. So here we don't have that. I mean, obviously we're going to have already built in, I believe function of 10 is going to be mute and FLF and F12 are going to be up and down volume. I believe we will, like I said, we will look into it when we get into the software. But we have a lovely keyboard. We have very nice weight. So it's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. It's definitely not going to be sliding around. It has some really nice clean legends, some nice keycaps. I would have appreciated a few extra switches and a few extra keycaps, though, because we don't really have any re remapping kind of to do. I can see not adding the extra keycaps. I, I, I see sense in that, um, though a couple of extra switches would have still been really nice just in case you guys at leo bog want to start throwing them in hint hint anyway let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we apply some usb for the leds so we have a nice lovely glow coming up i mean uh i know some people don't like south facing because they feel like the light kind of shines in their eyes. I haven't had an issue with that um, myself, but for those that may not like that, they're not going to have that issue with this keyboard because they're north facing. So as you can see, the lights are kind of shining towards the front of the next keycap on the row above it. So it has a very nice clean color. They look pretty bright, I gotta say. Ah. The diffuser, of course, I had forgotten for a second. So obviously that's going to lower it and that's going to, we have really nice, bright RGB. Let's see what it looks like without the diffuser. Yeah, that's pretty bright. I'd say, um, you're not going to miss that. So I've seen some keyboards that just have anemic RGB. Like I'm like, do I have the brightness all the way up? Um, so I like that Leo Bog has a nice bright RGB. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can use a keyboard and I do use keyboards here and there that don't have RGB. I don't have to have RGB, but if it has it, I like it. I usually just set it to colors that match with the keycap set. I don't really like the effects, um, like especially the ones that change or, or like go explode out from your fingers because it takes my eyes off the monitor and makes me want to look at you know because i can kind of see it out of the corner of my eye so i'm like what is it <laughs> and and it just uh i don't know it, it it does mess with my productivity but having a nice color um it's just nice um especially at night i mean not that i need to see the keys but it's nice to you know to be able to at least have a little bit of light but not light that's going to like affect watching a movie or something like that so anyway that's just my diatribe on keys so yeah we have the number lock there caps lock there and oh so this is the windows lock so function windows will lock the windows key in case you're playing a game and you don't want windows to activate and then i'll tell you if it is available so we obviously we have the numpad uh we have the full size numpad so i know a lot of people are like ah oh, but it's got a one u zero and I get it because here is the big key and it's one, the zero is one of the most used numbers, especially if you're doing large amounts of data and putting that, that include numbers. Um, it's one of the most used numbers out of all of the 10 digits. Uh, so, because, you know, especially if you're doing, you know, like decimals, but anyway, I'm not going to get into a math lesson. Um, but having that full size zero for some people, it it is the difference between being eighty percent productive and being one hundred percent productive, or you know some arbitrary change in there. So I know a lot of people are used to it, and that's that's the one reason I've heard the most when 
when I suggest to people that are looking for a full-size keyboard, if they'd consider an 1800 or, and I, you know, I'll show them an 1800, they're like, oh, everything is, that, that looks great, but that little zero, it's like that little zero, that poor little guy. But when it has a full-size zero, people are like, all right, yeah, I can go that, that, that order. Oh, yeah, all right, I can give that keyboard a shot. Let's go. So it's funny because I actually do uh, what I I guess I call match pairing um, keyboards with with owners, trying to find just the right keyboard, but I don't do it for everybody. Sometimes it just kind of happens. <laughs> My wife will be waiting for me to help her with something in the yard, and I'll be like, hold on, i got to finish helping so-and-so pick out a new keyboard <laughs> no but i i enjoy it I honestly do i've met some really great people uh while doing this um uh, sometimes we have fun in the comment section sometimes we just go offline or on discord or one of the many platforms and uh i don't know i've just i've met a lot of great people uh doing this hobby um it's funny that you know, i picked this hobby i honestly for the longest time i thought oh i you know, when I get older and I'm, you know, retired or semi-retired, I'm really going to get into making models. Um, and I did, don't get me wrong, I love 3D printing and I do do some stuff with 3D printing and I have a few 3D printers. But, but I will say that keyboards just have become a hobby that I keep finding interest in. I find that I quite enjoy it and it actually, working on a keyboard, <laughs> it brings me peace. It literally, I can see it on my watch. My heart rate will go down. My blood pressure will go down. And it's a, it's actually therapeutic. I get something out of it. I hope you guys get something out of it. But anyway, I'm going into the weeds. Uh, so we have nice uh, colors. Let me see. This will probably, that's, yep, this will take us through the different effects. Obviously, I'm familiar. That a lot of the uh, keyboard companies are starting to stick to similar um, bindings for how to control the keys, which I appreciate. I almost wish that there was a standard. Then I also wish that there was a universal firmware that we could just use with every keyboard. Maybe I'll ask ChatGPT to make me one. So we have a lovely 98%, which could, like I say, serve as a full-size keyboard, but you're literally, I mean, you're saving what, one, two, almost three columns worth of space. Uh, it's just, it, you, that much more space for your mouse now um, I know my desk can very quickly especially if I got a lot of things to do for the week very quickly and get just filled with whether it's folders mail um, USB drives laptops keyboards switches what have you so every inch of space on my desktop counts so having a layout like this is going to give you all the space you know that you can get while giving you still the possibility to use a full-size keyboard and getting used to where these keys are at really isn't going to take that long i mean your page up your page down over here or you delete insert over here home end over here and i mean i don't use scroll lock much at all so print screen and i usually use a different program because I don't like print screening my entire screen. I know that you can find it to different apps. I just I just do it with the with mouse clicks. But I run Linux, so completely different world. This keyboard sounds amazing. It does have those hi-fi layers. The IXP on here does actually look a little bit thicker. But I mean I've got to say that this is just I really do enjoy how this keyboard sounds stock. Um, the switch on here is actually a little bit deeper than uh, I think. I want to say the first one I built was with Leo Bog switches. And the second one I got was with Leo Bog switches to the Greywood. So I think they're very similar. But this one is... Yeah, I'm going to say that this one is deeper from what I can recall. 
the gray wood, this this switch seems deeper. I really want to find out what it is. But it just it just sounds so good. Don't get me wrong. Part of the hobby is getting in there and modifying this keyboard. And this one is already so deep. I, I want to see if I can get this one to get even go even deeper. Go that very wide deep. And so I'm, when I come back to it, that's gonna be the uh that's gonna be the goal. But I I've got to say, like a, a TKL is my favorite layout, but I use a numpad with that. And of course, a numpad with a full zero. So it's kind of a cheat to say TKL is my favorite layout because I almost, I can't hardly, no, I mean, I can use it and I can't do work, but if I'm going to be doing any sort of uh, data input, uh, number crunching, it just makes it so much easier to have a numpad. Yes, I can do it using numbers row but it just becomes tedious having the numbers like this and once you get off your mark because there's nothing really to keep you on track you know where you're at um because you're just entering numbers so you don't want to be using both I, I i don't anyway so i always have a numpad this though this is like if i wanted to take my numpad off my desk take my keyboard and use one of these i can use 80 1800 and 98 all day long without an issue a full size actually i put a full size on my desk not too long ago and actually was kind of like i was off because i'm so used to everything being much closer together that i had to keep looking down i'm like oh that's right i'm using a full size and um it was it was weird it's and i mean <laughs> since the 80s i've been using a full-size keyboard except for i don't think the the one in the pc junior counted as full-size i'm not sure i'll have to look that up i don't think it was um but basically since then full-size keyboards were just the norm just that's just what what it was and um only for a few years have i been using you know similar layouts to this 1898 percent but it's just funny how quickly like it's like oh like, all this wasted space blank space there could be switches there that's all my in my head that's what i was like what if we just leave it a full size and just fill in all the empty spots more key switch spots <laughs> too many too many keys um speaking of i still i, I still have the boston 120 to build i really got to get to that i really got to get to like quite a few keyboards i do want to apologize for any delay uh last weeks have been a little bit crazy um there was a death in the family i fell down the stairs and really messed up my ankle uh, and just been dealing with with some other things so i do apologize for delays and videos that i've been promising you guys i've got a whole list i've actually started filming and started editing i still got to do some script finishing but i'm I've never, I've never really done the script videos. I like doing just kind of like this stream of consciousness, but I'm going to do switch video, a keyboard video, kind of basically the basics. I just want something that will answer, if not all the questions, the majority of questions that newcomers that come into the hobby might be asking and having one place where they can just watch something that's, I'm going to keep as much opinion out of it as possible and stay to the stick to the facts so that people can get a good idea of the keyboard hobby of it's something they really like all right i'm ready to dig into this rabbit hole i'm ready to dive in deep all right well here it is so it, it's coming i just gotta I gotta, I gotta i gotta live too and life sometimes just kind of kicks you in the butt i'm sure everyone out there knows what i mean Anyway, this is an amazing keyboard, out of the box, ready to go. For most people, this is going to be it. Um, they're they're going to love this. They do have uh, different colorways available uh, for this. But I got to say, this, in my opinion, is a keyboard that most people, especially if somebody is looking for a premium keyboard, I don't think they're going to be like, oh, it's too big. I mean, yes, some gamers might say, why isn't it a 60%? From what I've seen... These boards do have all have MKRO. I mean, beyond that, it's going to be a keyboard that I think most people are going to be happy with. Just the specs. Today, we're taking a look at the Leo Bong High 98. A 98 percent or 1800 compact wired aluminum mechanical keyboard. It comes with a gasket mounted FR4 plate 
and a north-facing 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatible PCB with hi-fi layers and no support for screw and stabilizers. It is also loaded with double shot PVT cherry keycaps that come measuring in at 1.5 millimeters of thickness. It does not include a dedicated OS switch. It uses function plus Q, W, or E. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters while the back sits at 38, providing for a typing angle of 10 degrees, and it comes weighing in at 2,300 grams. This keyboard MSRPs for $109.99. Links below. So it's it's calling an 1800, so all this time I'm saying 9800. See, I always seem to get it wrong. I think there's something just in my brain that just sees this layout always as an 1800, but then I thought it was wrong. So I don't know. 1800. It's always fun jumping into a new uh, school of knowledge for whatever it may be from bird watching to plants to keyboards and all the things that, you know, you learn and you pick up. I don't know. I find it fascinating. I really like this keyboard. I really am looking forward to completing production so I can put it on my desk and daily drive it for a little while because it does sound nice. And even as light as these switches are, which I know will cause me some mix-ups because I, I, I always rest my, my hands on the keys. So these are kind of light and I'm afraid I don't even want to do it while I'm recording. I, I might do something. Um, so they're pretty light, but I'm going to try them out. And if they're too light, then I'm going to probably switch them out and I'll do, maybe I'll do a separate review of the switches. They are the Barbie linear, the Leo Bog Barbie linear switch. So, um, I really, I mean, I honestly, like I said, for one, there wasn't that many options. Most keyboards were going to be your 75%, your 65%, and 60%. Um, they, there weren't many full size or 1800 or 98% in the group by market. There were some, don't get me wrong, but there weren't many. But even the ones that were around back then, you were looking at four, five, six hundred dollars. It was so much of a premium because there wasn't that many. And because obviously it used more material, cost more to ship. So um, the iron is one of the first ones that I, I can recall. But I know there, there was probably some other ones. I can't keep up with all of them. I try to. I really do. The fact this that a keyboard of this quality and caliber can be found for its price, it's just... I don't know. To me, I, I find it phenomenal. Um, I love that we have so many options out there. And like I said, I think I think that this keyboard is a good gateway for those that you know may want to get into mechanical keyboards but are afraid to move away from a full-size keyboard. Um, this could be the, that step forward, obviously going to the TKL next and maybe even a 75% learning that you can rebind some keys or learning that some keys just are so hardly used that hiding them under a function layer isn't going to really cause that much of a problem it's it's funny how quick we can adapt we adapt pretty quickly anyway i, I definitely enjoyed um reviewing this keyboard today i look forward to more keyboards from leo bond i have gotten so many requests for the high eight and like i said they they haven't told me that i can't review it they they keep telling me they need to get stock so it's either that popular or a new revision is coming out all right so we want to make sure we download the leobog one software i'll put links down below go ahead and install it and run it leobog one is one of the only configuration software there's like a handful of companies that actually have a single software driver package which i prefer as we can see we have our default top layer along with a function one, function two, and a tap layer. So almost like three different layers. Um, where it says the profile, you can actually create different profiles and each of them have different default and function layers. So I actually like their uh, remapper. It has icons. It does make it easier for some people, especially all, at all grouped up. Um, but do remember there's the icon for the little floppy down at the bottom. You want to save any changes that you make so that it gets passed down to the keyboard. Now under lighting, obviously we can select, go through the different effects that it has. If it has uh, the option for color uh, or brightness or speed, we can make adjustments there. And we also see that we have a section that's called self-define. 
and self-define is basically where you would create or do your per key RGB. Now we also have the music effect, e effect. <laughs> the music effect, I don't usually use this, but you can turn it on and it will match the lights to any music that's playing loud enough for it to hear. Macro editor is pretty basic. You can add a folder to group macros together. Then you can add a new ma macro, start recording. You type down what you want. You can adjust the timing on them. You can remove specific keys. You can edit the key and then you can save it. At that point, you can go back to your function layers and actually bind it to a key or a function key combination. Then at the top, we have our global settings. Device info will give us our firmware version along with the version of the software that we're using, which is LeoBog 1 2.0. Um, we can set the, how the software functions, if it auto runs at start, if it closes or hangs out in your task manager bar. And this is where you would turn on tap and set the sensitivity. Um, I do believe that uh, the, the lower the sensitivity is, uh, the shorter it's going to you know, be. So you want to find a nice medium between a tap and you know, just a regular keystroke. So don't need a firmware update and debounce. You would only want to try to adjust that if you're having issues with double typing. But I wouldn't touch it otherwise. If everything works just fine, I would leave debounce alone. So I brought out the Leo Bog i98's little brother, the i75. Obviously, same colorway, different keycap profile. I believe uh, these are M MDA. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're MDA. Anyway, this has been a one of my favorite aluminum keyboards. I got to tell you, honestly, I really like this keyboard. It's um, for the price and for what you get. It's just uh, <laughs> it's one of my more favorite 75 percent of the ones that have come out recently. So anyway, we've got a uh, pretty decent software leo bog software it's a single package uh, and it has multiple function layers even if you have a full they don't care and that's nice because i mean who knows maybe you want to have you know a whole bunch of extra features you know and be able to toggle over to you know function layer two and it start you know being your video producing you know board um which is completely understandable and it's nice that they have that um Obviously, I'm more for and I want to find an immersive, complete, all-in-one firmware that will work on any OS. One of these days, hopefully we'll see it. I think we will as, as the hobby continues to grow. But for what LeoBot offers, I mean, it's a solid keyboard. Um, I haven't had any issues in mine. Uh, I have the K81 and two high 75s and between my kids and myself they're all being used i mean constantly and i haven't had a single issue so um, i don't read about many issues with leo bogs most of the times it's um just helping people people are asking how do i do a, you know certain this or what key on the leo bog high 75 is print screen bound to or you know things like that um but i honestly i i obviously any reports that i get um, you know, from issues with keyboards, it's going to just be, you know, it's not an actual data study. I'm just, you know, given what I have experienced. I mean, the most questions I have about the Leo Bogs are, you know, which one should I get or what color should I get? I want to thank Leo Bog for sending out this keyboard uh, for review. I really do like it. I like the colors. I like how it sounds. I think a lot of people are going to like this keyboard if this is their first foray into mechanical keyboards and especially if they're coming from a full size and they're used to a full size i think this one's gonna kind of hit that sweet spot and allow them to kind of okay um personally i prefer a heavier weight spring so we'll see about uh switching those out at some point i do want to open it up and see what's in there and when i come back to it we'll do that maybe we'll um do both Leo Bogs at once and, and have some fun, but see, you know, the mounting style, how that's done. Check out the PCB, check out the foam, you know, take it apart because tearing stuff down and building it up, up that's half the fun, right? Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Leo Bog Hi 98. If you have any questions, any comments for when I come back to it, please leave it down in the comment sections below. Um, a like, a subscribe does go a long way, so it's highly appreciated. But if I need to do something else to earn your like, please let me know down below.
I hope that you have a wonderful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.